Uh, and Tom, clearly the paper's going to carry on, we understand, with this. But um, interesting that Isabel Oakeshott has, has taken time out again to say, I'm doing this in, in the public interest not to have a go at Matt Hancock. Yes, and after all, she will be saying that for some time to come, emphasising, driving home what, in her view, is the public interest uh, case behind this. Because, of course, let's not forget, in order for these messages to be published, Isabel Oakeshott had to break a non-disclosure agreement, a legal agreement, a contract with Matt Hancock. And uh, in order to justify the breach of that contract, there has to be a very strong cause of public interest. So it's why in the first day of these lockdown files, we saw a long editorial from Isabel Oakeshott saying exactly why she did it, why it was necessary for this information to be in the public domain sooner rather than later. And ultimately, that is what this rests on, because, of course, we do know this information has been handed across to the COVID inquiry. Matt Hancock handed all of those uh, texts to the COVID inquiry some time ago, and so they will be, the ones that are relevant at least, will be uh, in the public domain or, or at least filtered through and looked through yeah. by that inquiry uh, as time goes on. But the question that Isabel Oakeshott and others and The Telegraph are raising is, will that inquiry conclude soon enough to get those answers uh, as soon as we need to, to learn the lessons? If, God forbid, another pandemic came along soon, we'd need those uh, lessons sooner rather than later. Yeah, and, and of course the indications are that it was pretty chaotic behind the scenes in terms of the government trying to address this. But um, we should reflect that the Hancock camp have come out quite aggressively, uh, indicating that they think this is a biased account because of her own anti-lockdown agenda. Yes, and this is a, a phrase repeated by Matt Hancock in all of his communications, that the messages that have been chosen to be presented, and in some cases Matt Hancock alleges doctored, with uh, certain lines being left out. Matt Hancock says is to suit an anti-lockdown agenda. Um, the Telegraph has been known to be critical of lockdown in the past. It's one of these papers that has looked about all the other aspects of what the pandemic policy uh, did. And today it's focusing on the knock-on effects for the uh, welfare of children through their education. Children, of course, not particularly affected by the virus, but massively affected by the restrictions that that were placed upon them and uh, several lost years of, of uh, schooling, certainly the exams, fiascos that we've seen in recent years, that mm. has a genuine impact on children. However, of course, the other side of that is that schools were clearly a vector of transmission for this disease and there are many different uh, decisions that need to be weighed up and clearly were actively debated within government and we see that in the messages published today. Now, we'll stay in Westminster, but not, of course, at Parliament in terms of former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who has broken cover at long last to talk about the Windsor framework. And uh, this was at a soft power um, a speech or a, a, a sort of conference saying he found it very difficult to actually vote for the Windsor deal. Yes, Boris Johnson speaking at the Global Soft Power Summit today uh, is breaking cover. We haven't heard from him for quite a long time. And in a very wide-ranging speech, he spoke about everything from corporation tax to rolled dal. Uh, he also uh, gave his views on this Windsor framework agreed by the government uh, between Rishi Sunak and EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen back on Monday. Uh, well, Boris Johnson isn't a massive fan of the agreement. He's <laughs> saying that it could in certain ways act as a, a drag on UK regulatory divergence from the European Union. Uh, and he says that his preferred mechanism of, of the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, that mm. unilateral move to disapply parts of EU law, is actually what got the EU to the table in the first place. Boris Johnson really defending his legacy in terms of those negotiations with the EU that actually began under his premiership. Um, but at the end end of all of that, even pointing to the many imperfections as he sees them in this deal, he says he will probably end up voting for it because people want to see an end to the years of wrangling and negotiating.